<laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome to another Camper Van Higgy video. Yeah. We've had Higgy now nearly three years. Yeah. So, and we've done lots of travelling to various places and we thought it might be a good idea just to tell you a bit about the things we've learnt. Handy how... hip, hips and tints. <laughs> Andy hit no <laughs> I can't do it now. Right, start again. Handy right. hints and tips. <laughs> Things practical. Right now. Don't okay. stop. We'll start again. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> this could be the longest video in history. Okay? Yeah. Yes? It will be alright in a minute. Every time I start. Welcome to another Camper Van Higgy video. Um, we've had Higgy, it'll be three years in February. Yeah. And we've done loads of travelling, been uh, all through France for 10 weeks and uh, across to Guernsey and lots up, of places in up the UK. To Scotland. Up to Scotland. Wales. And all over. So we thought we've learnt a bit now. A little and bit. A little <laughs> bit. And it might be useful just to give you some thoughts, hints, and tips uh, after so much experience now. Um, so this video is in probably four sections. A um, bit about talking about preparing the van, um, specifically talking about European travel now we've uh, done it. Um, we thought it'd be important to talk about personal safety and then some general tips and hints around camper van life. So if we start off with camper van prep, um, first thing I guess is because neither of us are really into uh, full-scale motor mechanics no. we do uh, give the van a good check before we go on anything certainly in terms of a major yeah. trip yeah um, obviously you get your MOT uh, we get it serviced in terms of the van but also then the habitation check which is an annual check mm. um, we do it with Camper King who yeah. converted the van in first place and it's a rolling um, sort of warranty they give with it as well um, and that gives you extra peace of mind because uh, to be honest any problems we've had I mean there's you can imagine there's a lot of working parts so we've had one or two things um, not work go wrong um, but Camper King have, have just put it all straight you know with no qualms or quibbles or anything they've sorted out any problems or issues we've had so going to them annually and having it checked over it just seems common sense to us particularly gas electric water a lot of moving parts a lot of things that can stop working go wrong so having it checked annually is sensible definitely and um, we also have a few sort of safety things in the van we do have both a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket yeah um and we've also got they're not here yeah. Uh, carbon monoxide. Yes, a small monoxide carbon monitor, monoxide monitor. Just for, for safety on that front as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of getting the van prepped to make sure. We also take things like a, a spanner so we can change the gas bottle, uh, screwdrivers, and a few things that we know we might need if things start to rattle or come apart. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah not, not us. Not us. Although <laughs> we're coming well, apart. Fairly regularly. Slowly. Yeah. So yeah. that's all the stuff in the van. Um, yeah. Moving on to Europe, yeah, and of course we were travelling. Uh, oh, with all the, the fuss uh, about Brexit, Brexit and some of the interesting things we came across <laughs> on YouTube. Like you know, it was almost like Armageddon, really. You know, um, oh, if you leave, you won't be able to get back in and um, into the country. Oh, it, it was just ridiculous. We just chose to ignore it all, and but we um, did need to make quite a bit of preparation didn't we so we preparation big, big is everything that is our mantra yeah. yeah definitely particularly if you want to travel abroad for peace of mind i would highly recommend you get yourself a spreadsheet or some kind of list and do a bit of research so looking at our spreadsheet and things we well first of all together. it might be worth pointing out quickly mm -hmm. uh, the rac the aa green flag um caravan and motorhome club the camping and caravanning club the uk government all have websites and all have information 
on European travel. Um, and it's always worth checking that you're on a legitimate site. I'd emphasize that as well before we go into anything else in detail. Because um, unfortunately there are a few naughty people out there who will try and take your money for no good reason. So you, you know, just be careful you're on the site you should be on. Yeah. That's the thing. But anyway. And then in terms of what we got. Yeah, we'll come down uh, to the list now and we'll go list. down the list. So there was the international driving license. Yeah. Which we actually wouldn't have needed because we were still in the EU, but might be needed going forward. Yeah. Uh, and we there are different types, aren't there? Yes, there's different years of, of release. And it varies, believe it or not. France and Spain don't ask for the same one. I think Germany is slightly different. It's all down to the year it was um, changed in as yeah. to what year they go on. So you go on to the dot gov dot uk and it'll tell you whichever country you're going to it'll tell you which one you need and in terms of getting it we went yeah, to the post, the post office, office. they're they making it available in most post office yeah. now because of brexit i think, I think. It was about five wasn't it 550 mm, something like that yeah it's certainly yeah. not an expensive no no thing to have and we're worth having um in france we got something called an emissions of vignette yeah. which you actually then that's about making sure you're on the right site for that one. Oh yes particularly yes. but a vignette actually is something that looks at how much uh, uh, what your emissions are on the vehicle you're driving and then you get a sticker that you have to put in a certain position on your windscreen because to drive through certain cities in France now if you don't have one of these and it flags up you're fined um, and, and it's quite a heavy fine as well. I, believe. I mean I filled that in and you just put in the details of your vehicle and it tells you what uh, number you are and I think we're yeah. number two yes, um, that's in right. terms of what you have to pay and that's and right yeah stuff. and it, that, yeah. that governs how much you pay um, the caravan club had a link to um, oh yes to the site to the site and you were warned on that particular one that there are sites pretending or purporting to be for the vignettes and they're not so they'll take your money and blah blah, blah, blah. so just check it's legitimate that that particular site it was very efficient yeah it all came in good time uh, yes and it, it, it we didn't have any problem with them at all no, no it, it came it was five it's only a few euros wasn't it yeah, that wasn't expensive either no no um and but it means once it's in the window you know you've got it and you can yeah just you can pay on your credit card so you've got yeah. security of that and it and it and the um certificate sticker just up, come up, through yeah and you just came when the they window. said it would yeah, yeah. Um, obviously insurance you'd expect to have that fully comp and uh, minimum is also. third party over there yeah. actually in France but once you've got that then yeah. the thing you get from your insurer is an insurance green card yeah it's not listed as required at the moment but post Brexit particularly if there's no deal I think it might that be something be that you required. actually need to get but to be honest we just rang our insurers up and it came virtually the next day yeah it wasn't it's a problem just a paper form with all the details Didn't written on there much fuss about nothing no, really but. but we had that as well yeah, yeah um we went for full-scale breakdown cover yeah um particularly because yeah. we wouldn't know what to do ourselves no, no. Uh, so we got a good one that would bring the van back bring us back and do all that sort of uh, yeah. stuff that you need yeah um and then things because you're on the continent we had to get the headlight converters which we ordered again online they came through there's a particular place you have to stick them on the headlamp but there's a video on youtube that tells you where you do it and also there's a big sheet of paper listing every type of vehicle and it tells you the positioning that you have to put them on because of the nature of the reflector on your headlamp um, we had to have a gb sticker um, we also took spare bulbs a full set so we just went to the garage mm -hmm. and asked for a full set of bulbs uh, for the van uh, you need your warning triangle. Mm -hmm. um, you need a uh, high vis jackets for everybody. For everybody. Everybody who's travelling in your and vehicle. I think if you had an animal, you'd have one. to as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and sorry. whatever you do in France, if you get stopped on the road or you have to stop for a breakdown or anything, if you get out of the vehicle, put it on because you'll get fined if you don't. Even yeah. if the police stop you, if they ask you to get out of the vehicle, put your high vis on. Yep. First. Um, also, there's a requirement for a breathalyzer kit, which has to meet a certain standard. What is it? An NF standard. It's NF in standard. France. I'm not quite sure that means. Don't know what it means, but we says it on the pack. We made sure we had yeah. one of those as well. Yeah. Um, so I think those are all the things specific. First to aid France. kit. 
first aid kit, mm -hmm. um, which again, uh, we had one that came with the car anyway, so we used that, but you can just make sure I you've got extra all the extra well. things. You have on campsites, one of the things that, uh, and a few of them, oh, yes, we did here, an we? adapter which changed the type of fitting. So, um, whether you can see that, that end goes on your lead and that plugs into the hookup point on the campsite. So, it's Very basically like small. a two pin mm -hmm. European plug. Uh, we had to use that on a couple of them, didn't we? Yeah, but only two actually. Most of them yeah. were the same as same ours. Same as ours. Um, so that but handy to have. But knowing it's there was important. And it wasn't expensive. No, again, again another yeah. five or seven pounds, I think it was. Yeah. Um, we then also decided to make sure we had copies of everything that we would need in terms of the paperwork. Yeah, digital copies of everything on, on one of the um, iPads. Yeah, so we could uh, always call that up. Yeah, and also I kept a paper copy as well um, in case, uh, uh, you know, just in case really um, they're recommended. Yeah. And we always have a photocopy of our passports as well, don't we? We do, There's we do, yeah, photocopies. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we thought it was useful to have a whole list of numbers, telephone, telephone numbers, numbers that yeah. we could refer to. So if you lost your bank card, if you lost your credit card, yeah. um, you obviously then have got to have your driving license, both the plastic piece yeah, and the paper do, version as well. You do need well. both. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, original copies or originals of the vehicle insurance and the car yeah. registration document. Yeah, so they wouldn't it take won't take, copies. no, no, I'm not allowed. So we mm. had to make sure we got those and yeah. stored safely. Um, we had the medical health insurance because being still in the EU, you can use the take your um, health card. A health card. Yeah. Um, don't know what it's going to be like post Brexit. No, so private health insurance is probably a good idea. Yeah, and we always had emergency telephone numbers logged as well. Yeah, it, we were for for France for the country you're in. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to find out what the emergency numbers are. Um, for the police, the medical or fire, you know, Just the standard for that things. Peace of mind, yeah, really. yeah. Um, because we're members of both the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the Camping and Caravanning Club, we thought it might be a good idea to have those. We used them both for various booking. We did Caravan um, Club. We used a lot. Actually. A lot for the campsites, and yeah. it was actually the Camping and Caravan Club that organised the, the ferry to ferry Guernsey. Over to yes. Guernsey from St Malo. So both were useful to have. Yeah. Uh, and of course they have information on things as well so you can always ring them up about yeah uh, if you're stuck they're very helpful as you as a member i think if you were stuck they'd be a I good thing you'd get some good, good advice place to ring for advice yeah um also there's the key card camping the axi card a c s i yeah they're two different cards the axi one is is by far the more widely used but you can use it as id on a campsite as well and also great discounts Yes, out off of season. season discounts yeah, are fab with Axi Card. Yeah, and they're online, ACSI, or via the Camping and Caravan or Caravan Club. Yep. Yep. Um, and think sticking with all things of that nature, we also then had to decide what we do about money Ooh, uh, in terms of currency. Don't forget the long power cable. Oh. In oh. France, it's not like in in Britain where you tend to have the electric points reasonably close you know to only you. shared by two or three perhaps pitches four at the most in france it can be <laughs> the other end well, of the field it to be, yeah, <laughs> um, and a lot of french motorhomers and that they had really long electric cables yes knowing that yeah. they could be shared by quite a few pitches yes I think, yeah that's the difference. so uh, that's quite worth bearing in mind yeah mm. and then on the money front um Yes, how do you take money? How do you take money? Because obviously yeah. um, taking lots of cash, you um, need to be careful with that. Credit cards, there can be fees. And then we also found out about a preloaded MasterCard. Card, MasterCard yeah. From the post, the post office. office. Yeah. Travel money service yeah. or something. You load it up in the... Um, um, currency of, currency the, of the country you're going to. And always load it up in the currency you want to spend. Yeah. Because it's it's better. Because the conversion the rates conversion rates are better. Be, yeah. And when you get to the other end, always pay. Sometimes they'll offer you the choice of paying in in your own currency or their currency. Always best to pay in their currency, and then you haven't got extra charges. Yeah. And you should not be charged for using that card. We weren't charged anywhere. Yeah, anywhere we went. We were yeah. sort of 
warned a little bit about some companies who try and charge you for the privilege they shouldn't but be doing well, that. I mean, we used it mostly mm. for supermarket shopping, food and the like. And that's Petrol. Not a problem. Some Petrol, stations. unless it was a Sunday and they weren't manned and they had these yeah. automated things and then they yeah. wouldn't take the card no. for some reason. So it had to be a cash or a credit card. But yeah. that was because it was a Sunday for, and there was no staff. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I think we used it pretty much all, all the, the time, time and everywhere. Yes. Uh, and it worked really well. And it we, did. Uh, it did work well. We would... Um, it was always reassuring because you can always then on your phone check your balance and you could top up. You can transfer yes, money onto yes, it on the phone. Yes, you can. Because it's worth noting that even today, where in Britain we widely use credit cards, most places accept them now. It's very seldom you can't pay by credit card. But we were told and have noticed in Germany, for instance, there are still places where they don't accept credit cards. Um, which is you know, quite a surprise, mm -hmm. really. And then also, of course, in Sweden, it's known for actually um, taking no cash at all. So you've got one extreme and the other. And it, so it's always worth doing a bit of research and finding out what's recommended in the country you're traveling to. So you're not caught out, basically. Yep. Um, specifically, because we went to France, so we learned a few things about that. Yeah. Um, I guess the first thing is, we were there when they had a few bank holidays. In yeah. France, a bank holiday is a bank holiday. Yeah, nothing um, opens. Nothing opens. It's also on the date. It's not like ours where you move it to the Monday or the Friday. If it's 12th and it's a Wednesday, the that's, Wednesday's that's the bank the holiday. That's the bank holiday, yeah. So it always caught us out a bit because yeah. suddenly... You uh, think, where is everybody? Or people disappeared. Yes. Um, yeah. But once you know, you can work around that. Yeah. Uh, also, Sundays. Still, Sundays um, from 12.30 generally... Or a all day the shop rest. shut. Yep. So super, even the big supermarkets through to the local shops all shut. Yeah. So uh, you just make sure you plan ahead and get the stuff uh, beforehand. And do what the French do. Yeah. Have a family day and go out and picnic. So they all seem to just go That's and what, enjoy themselves. Yeah, they do. They they do. They're very yes, good fun. They being family them. oriented as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. And then. Um, Love their two-hour lunch breaks, the That's French. That's right. That's what I was going to talk about. Lunch um, breaks. Yeah, yeah. When in Rome, as they say, or when in Paris, in this yeah. case, do as they do. And um, So, again, we went into a town, yes. usually just before 12, <laughs> yeah. to find the whole lot shut. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> apart from the restaurants. So you can get something to eat, but you couldn't do anything else. So yeah. we start but it was to learn great, that, because, we? yeah, because um, the French just love their lunches, and the atmosphere and everything was always lovely. Um, so you sort of adapt to that way of doing things, really. Um, oh, and a very important thing here not to forget is if you drink decaf tea, <laughs> take some with you because nobody seems to sell. Nobody it. seems to sell decaf tea in France. They obviously only go for the strong caffeine stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that was all things French, wasn't it? All yeah. Things, I think. And the other thing I would just say from personal experience, my French is not brilliant. It's very basic, O level at the best, really. But if you try and speak even just a little bit of French, they are more than happy to respond positively to you. We found that, didn't yeah. we? Even the French policeman, who only looked 12 and a half, bless him, who stopped us in Biarritz, once we'd attempted to converse in French, he, he, he was much more pleasant. And, yeah. and very helpful, And, and really, really yeah. helpful, a really nice lad, actually. Um, so we took a, a little book, a phrase, phrase book. A phrase book. And also um, we did resort to Google Translate on a few things. We did on a few things. Because that was quite useful for things like signs, because you could actually put the phone on the sign and it would translate it Yeah, based particularly on when the words. you're driving in a town and everything's coming at you yeah. and you can't translate it quick enough. Um, it, so that, that proved that out. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. Yep. So the other thing we were mentioning, because it's on the list, was the airs in France as well. Yeah. So these are free or small charges. We actually didn't use. No, we got the any. books. We got all the books. There's yeah. two books, North and South France. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people use them very, very regularly. Yeah, you can buy um, them online through. Um, uh, it's called Vicarious. Vicarious Media. Media. Yeah. Uh, just put in French airs, and it'll come up. Uh, and they have apps as well, don't they, that yeah. you can pay to gain access to. And they are everywhere the airs are. Um, and some are better than others. Mostly they look really good from the yes. ones we saw. Uh -huh. um, and they were very popular, to be honest. And some of them were rammed. So 
uh, it's a cheap way of certainly getting around France. And there's so many of them, I think, if you found one yeah. was full, you could go on there to would the, be one not far the away. next one in the, in the next village yeah, or something. So yeah. that was always a fallback option, not that we actually yeah. needed it. They also, obviously, wild camping is talked about a lot these days. Um, we have never particularly wild camped. Um, and on YouTube, you'll get a lot of information and help about the best ways to do it. But one thing that's come across that we've noticed is they always say go with your gut feeling. If oh. you're pulling up somewhere to stay overnight and it doesn't feel right, don't stay there. Um, but that's not something we can sort of advise on really because we've not done it. But there's plenty of hints and tips on YouTube that we would recommend. Um, you there's usually a, yeah. a lot of warnings about motorway yeah, service areas. Yeah. That seems to be the more prevalent one. Yeah, to, the main roads where they have avoided. these sort of service yeah. areas where where they allow you to stay. You, you, we've heard and seen some some stories about bre attempted break-ins and. But it's about and being sensible. And yeah. as Caroline says, if you don't yeah. doesn't feel right, don't move stay on. there. Yeah, and and do your research again. It's all about I think about research really. 